Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Awal. Awal Adawungani. I'm head of the Web Management Unit at the Institute of Computing and ICT at Matabele University of Zaria. Uh, we are here this beautiful afternoon in the historical city of Zaria. Uh, actually, at the Institute headquarters, to be precise, to have a chat with one of our own, our own ordinary ABU graduate who left this school some few years back, but went out there and did some wonderful things. Uh, it is a story that we are going to look into today, and it is that same story that actually inspired us to ask the important question of this uh, series, which is um, what happens to ordinary ABU graduates when they leave ABU? Or do they go out there and become just like any other graduate of the university system in Nigeria as we know it? Or do they do exceptionally great things that we could be proud of that we can also emulate? It is my pleasure to welcome, uh, is it Malam or Mr. <laughs> Amin Bakori? Yeah. Uh, he graduated from maybe here with uh, a BSc statistics from a few years back. I don't want to talk too much. Uh, and that is why we have him here, so we hear from the horse's mouth. Uh, so join me in welcoming Mala Aminu Bakori. Sir, what is your name? Will you tell us something about yourself, where you are from, you have any allies, where did you live, ABU, what did you study? Okay, great. Thank you very much for having me today. Um, my name is Aminu Bakori, and um, I'm from Kasena State. I was born in Kasena, but I've lived almost all my life in Kaduna. Um, it's mostly more specific here in Zaria, where I studied from my nursery school to my university days. So I basically live all my life here in Kaduna. And yeah, I, I um, joined ABU Zaria in 2011, uh, where I studied statistics and graduated in 2015. Okay. To answer that question, I will relate it to my university days um, because while I was in the university, um, I, I wasn't that um, student who always thinks about going out of the university system and then focusing on getting a job or, you know, whatever. Of course, advancing my studies was also one of the key things I was looking at. But um, the entrepreneurship skills I had even while in school has pushed me towards building, say, um, companies even while I was in, um, in the university, even before graduating. So graduating, the, the, the basic thing that came to my mind was what should I do at this point in time? Um, I have two options. It's either I take a brown envelope, go ahead and start, you know, scouting for a job all that, up and down, or, you know, I start up something which can, you know, benefit me and also benefit other graduates that are coming from the university system. So graduating from ABU, I started um, something called Payant. And Payant is um, a company that provides payment services to individuals and businesses across Africa. We started um, Payant in 2011. Um, we started Payant in 2017, launched first January 2017 to be more specific. And um, over the past two years, we've um, gone from just processing online payments to also offline payments now for several merchants across the country and um, across the continent in Africa. Great. So basically, you are telling us that uh, instead of joining the band Wango like every other person, you decided to start something on your own, uh, which you call it Parent, whose business is actually to help uh, monetary transactions. Okay. So essentially, you are into the fintech Space. ecosystem. Yes. Great. So uh, now, fintech is not just any business that anybody can start anyhow. Mind that we are dealing with people's money here. Sure. Uh, so trust, quality, security assurance, everything has to be there. Mm. It is an extreme field full mm. of challenges. Mm. So what actually inspired you to go into that instead of, say, a, a small business center or start your own school or something? Mm. Why did you go into fintech? So um, while I was in the university, one thing I did was some, something called freelancing. So the idea of freelancing is you building applications for merchants, for clients outside of, um, for businesses, right? So uh, one, one major problem I had at that point in time was processing payments for my merchants. So I've worked, I've had the opportunity of working for several companies, not just in Nigeria, but also across the world. 
And one major problem I always have at that point in time was processing payments from outside the country down to Nigeria. Because whenever you make any 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 project, you you tend to even get paid for that um, project, right? So um, processing that payment was one of the major challenges I had. Then secondly, um, there's the software I've built. It's called uh, an enterprise management scheme. It's called um, EMS. My old company was called uh, French Style, so it was called French Style EMS. And what that software does is it allows um, big merchants, big um, companies to manage um, everything regarding their company. So it goes from inventory to staff management to payroll to invoices to payments, everything regarding their business. So it was a complete enterprise scheme that allows these businesses to manage their day-to-day -day activities. So looking at that software um, after graduating, one of the major things that was used um, you know, on that software was the invoicing and payment aspect of it. So I tend to look at it and be like, how can we extend this service to other businesses? So if, if this business is actually using this um, modules or this software, then it just means that other businesses are also in need of the service. So that was how the idea of pain came into play. Okay, so it's an inspiration that came from from a pain, if we put it that way. Right. And uh, instead of waiting for somebody to scratch your back for you and solve that pain, you mm -hmm. try to go ahead and solve it by yourself. Mm -hmm. And then of course you look beyond yourself and thought, wow, uh, I can also solve for other people. Right. That's great. But you know, uh, we won't say you are the first in that line of mm -hmm. thought or mm -hmm. action for that matter. There have been people playing along that field for long. Sure. That they have become giants. Mm -hmm. We are talking about giants like Interswitch, Remita, Vokpe, and the rest of them. So what was it like, you, just fresh out of university, entering that space, having to face this kind of giants, and yet, you, were you scared? How, how did you cope? So um, initially, when, when we started Payant, um, at first, at first we, we had to look at the, the FinTech spectrum completely. So from, from beginning to end, from you accepting card payments online, to how these card payments are being processed to connections with the banks and other um, key players in the ecosystem. And one thing we've discovered with existing payment schemes is that they tend to provide APIs, application developer programming interfaces, right? And these things are, uh, are you know, schemes that are provided to developers to build on. So it means um, a school that wants to accept payment will need to get a developer to start building product on top of the payment gateway. So from day one, we wanted to scrap that out. We wanted to provide payment services that will allow people to just go onto a website, register themselves, start accepting payment without the need of them needing any developer or any mobile application or website or what to do. So what we did from the initial point in time we started was we call ourselves a, um, an invoicing and payment platform for freelancers and businesses. That was the initial pitch for payment. So, we created this platform that allows somebody to just come, register, create an invoice, send it to his um, client, and then that client makes a payment using the online platform. So it's it's no longer just you um, accessing payment services by you, say, uh, building on top of those payment services. Because the, the reality of um, individuals and businesses in Africa is, in over 70% of cases, these people are not even tech savvy. They, their businesses are not even tech focused completely. All they just need to do is accept payment online and move on. Because the world has moved from you going into a bank branch and making payment or you accepting cash payment at your um, branches or uh, offices, right? So these people just want to accept payment. They don't care how does the payment method work or how does it uh, work between the banks, how do you settle them. All they just need is, let me accept payment, get it in my bank account and let's move on. So, and uh, successfully, you have been able to achieve this. Uh, rumors have it, but we're not sure. There are rumors, well, maybe you confirm for us, that uh, since it started January 1st, 2017, so sometimes now, about now, your platform has successfully processed transactions that are worth hundreds of millions of naira, both for our local clients here in Nigeria and elsewhere across Africa and the globe. Um, is that true? Why are you able to do that? 